Hey, what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle and welcome back to another Tai Chi flute technique. We're going to be doing a technique today using Tai Chi flute striking as well as some Tai Chi techniques with our fan to the back technique. Okay, so let's go get to work. All right, so let's get started on the technique. I'm going to grab the flute in my right hand. My left hand is going to be doing all the open hand techniques. So from here, I'll start with my right foot forward. My hand is going to be at the wrist and I'm going to have the flute pointing forward. You, this is not a very particular position. Just hold this position for our first movement. This is just a ready position. Now from here, I'm going to step out to a bow stance and I'm going to do a forward poke. This is going to be different than our first technique because rather than poking from the same, from the, the, the hip or from, if it's in my right hand, poking from the same side, I'm poking from the opposite side, which is still a very useful thrust. It's a very uh, useful technique in application. Okay, so again, with our right foot forward, hand over to the left, I'm going to step out to the bow stance and then poke forward. Now, I want to think of somebody stepping in blocking this technique stepping in and trying to control this wrist so now I'm going to move up forward bring my left hand up to the wrist rotate here just changing their grip rotating it out clearing space and then I'm going to follow up by pressing them back or hitting them okay so again from here I step out forward thrust now shifting back rotating and stepping up to it and then i'm going to step out fan through the back now notice i'm not trying to pull back and i'm not trying to push forward here i'm just rotating up and then wherever the flute ends up here where they're grabbing i just move up to it i don't need to pull i don't need to push i'm going to keep their hand where it's at and then strike and push them away okay so again we're going to start from our uh, empty position or balanced position step out poke rotate and bring it up step out fan through the back now once we've pressed them back whether they have let go or not we're going to twist and pry our hand out of that grip and then we're going to step forward bow stance and then hit them right on the head okay so we're going to go with a downward diagonal strike if they move back further we can hit the arm if they're tilting back too far we hit the body that's fine. If, we, if the head is protected, we can go sideways too, if the top of the head is protected. So again, from our position here, step out, poke, rotate up, fan through the back, pry it out, and then we're gonna hit the head. Now from here, we wanna return to a good position. So we're just gonna shift back as if doing a uh, repulse monkey. So now the weapon is in front of me. My backhand is at the ready. I'm ready to attack if I need to. I'm ready to defend if I need to. Okay, now if I face this way. So from our, our neutral position here, hand is all the way to the opposite side. I step out and then strike, shift as I, as I pivot the foot, stepping forward, shift, pivot the foot, pry it out, hit them, and then now shifting back to our repulse monkey position. A nice, easy technique. Now, this one I like, again, because it's employing more than just the weapon. You're not just thinking about what the weapon is doing, because if you're trying to just hit somebody with a weapon, they're going to try to block and control that weapon. Nobody wants to let this thing continue moving, so they're gonna try to do whatever they can to tie it up. And that's when you have other limbs of your body to attack. Okay, now the last thing I do want to mention is play with putting some power in these movements. And the important thing, as I've mentioned in other videos, is you understand where the body needs to put emphasis on certain things, where you turn, where you compress, where you extend or expand. These things are very important to know and you can feel them firsthand if you do it a little bit faster. Then once you can identify those, do it at the slow Tai Chi pace and you will make yourself much stronger and more efficient when you need to employ them fast again, okay? So again, from here, don't worry about it. Don't worry about perfect detail, but just get used to putting energy in all of these techniques, okay? 
And that's more or less how it can go. You can even play from this last one here, shifting back with a little extra power here. I wouldn't necessarily put too much emphasis on this rotation. It really depends on your opponent. But play with it. And then once you understand how, where that emphasis, where that snap is, you can include a little bit more connection in the body, a little bit extra understanding of how to do it better when moving slow. All right, so there you have it. The one big thing that I like to emphasize about this technique is that whenever you have a weapon, whether you're using it in sparring or self-defense, you shouldn't rely solely on that weapon because then you're limiting um, three other limbs. You have two feet and another hand to attack and defend, and that's something really important to keep in mind because otherwise, if you hyper-focus on this, you only have one tool to your possession for self-defense or for combat. Okay, so if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, be sure to subscribe. Till next time, this is Sifu Cuddle.